I was given the task of replicating the, the dome of the Prophet in Medina, mm -hmm. the green dome. So I just studied it. I looked at the star. Uh, I looked at how the shapes were formed. I redrew it a number of times. I figured out how that geometry is drawn. I put it in a 3D software, 3D modeled the dome, projected the geometry on it, studied the intersection points, um, printed it out at scale, each shape at scale, and then went in the dome and started to feel how those shapes would, would fit and how they would morph as they're applied from linear to spherical. So it was a whole process of, um, it, it, it was a process of taking this original inspiration and trying to figure out the ways to play with it. And so we, the, the final design deviates from the original Medina dome because of the size and scale of this dome. The dome is a challenge uh, I've accepted. Um, I think I always wanted to paint a dome as a painter. Um, I think there's not that much knowledge about how to execute the geometric painting of a dome. And so I think, it, in a sense, it is an experiment. They wanted a replica of the Medina, the, the Green Dome. And so it's a 16-pointed star. And the geometry, I don't, the geometry itself when it's applied to different sized radius changes as it's applied onto the surface. So even though it's an attempted replica, it's really not. The geometry had to be redeveloped to fit the space. And uh, my role is to realize the kind of, uh, the goals that they have on the interior of the stone. It's based on the same patterning, but there's actually, the scale of this dome is larger, so I had extended the geometry further to fit the space. So it's inspired, it's inspired by that dome, but it is Medina Masu Toronto.
the process began with uh, uh, studying how Michelangelo did the Sistine Chapel. And he used a stencil form. Uh, so I decided I would try the stencil. So I literally um, made, stenciled the shapes onto the wall and then started taping. And then I used lasers to make sure my horizontals and my verticals were connected. But I mean, I realized that the dome uses three radiuses. The radius changes three times as it moves across versus the architectural plans for it only had a one radius consistent. So the actual projected, the geometry that I designed for projection did not suit the actual curvature of the dome. So there were plenty of improvisations that had to be made. And so using lasers was the way to kind of uh, ensure that the improvisation still matched up. I, I put this artwork under the category of commission as opposed to my own body. Because when it's your own body, you have an idea and you just have to find any medium you can to get it out. Until you find a process that works and you multiply it. This was a different approach. This was, this geometry exists. It's a traditional sacred geometry. Public art is contentious. You have a lot of people who want uh, to control what goes on the walls. And um, I've, I've seen a lot, I mean, I think that's one of the most interesting things about creation of murals is who comes out of the woodwork to say they want control. And so you have um, people that are actually want to control the process, like who's present, who's part of it, is it secure, health, whatever, safety? And then you have um, people that want to control the content, uh, the colors or the images, the symbols, the representation, the precision. So it, nothing really surprises me. Like within all of those variables, you're gonna have somebody who is blowing the whistle at some point. And I try my best to be diplomatic to give as much warning and be as planned as possible to like see those, but you can never cover all the bases because there's always going to be somebody who sees something from their perspective that they want a say about, to make, to make a statement about. So um, I don't see it as an obstacle. I just see it as another unpredictable event that happens in these projects. Well, the irony, I think, is as I'm painting it, I'm more compelled by how new technologies might change the way this process happens. I mean, a simple thing like using lasers. When the first domes were created by Islamic artists, I doubt they had lasers at their disposal. So just the process of how they did it now, even more, contempor even more contemporary angle would say, why paint it, why not project light onto it?
the connection between Islamic art and graffiti to me is on two fronts. And I, I think like for me, there's one is the connection between lettering, the formal pursuit of a letter form that represents that whose style represents the meaning of the word and the, the beauty of Arabic calligraphy and the beauty of um, different fonts within graffiti itself. There's that relationship, that pursuit. I think secondarily is the pursuit of um, the public, the, the, the public presence of calligraphy. So graffiti obviously has its public presence. It's best served on a wall, legally or legally, you see it spatially, it takes a form. And I think like the calligraphy that by and large I'm exposed to in, in my life as a Muslim is in the masjid or outside of the masjid. And it's the way the scale of the letters and the way that the, the space is impacted by those forms. So there's this kind of spatial relationship that I think relates to graffiti. But the medium, um, the intention, those things are very different. I met um, the engineer who engineered the dome and he doesn't speak English and he came in and he looked at the work and he said he really likes the progress but he came in and showed me some ways that I can uh, f make sure that all my shapes are properly proportioned as I hit you know I'm only about a quarter way through so as I hit the other stages and so that was extremely amazing education for me I didn't really look at the ways that I could apply um, geometry um, as opposed to w my process which was create the geometry and project it on his was use the site to develop the geometry and I think that would have resulted in a different product or very similar products but a different process so you know the contractors told me there's another dome on the horizon and so inshallah I'll use this new knowledge of how to create the process in the next um, the next iteration of the dome.
like outside of the technical aspect of it, the process involved a lot of meetings with the contractor who built the dome, um, with the e former imam and current imam, former president and current president of Medina Masjid, um, the architect of the dome, Zach Ghanem, 